is breaking those corners with the file. And done. As mentioned before, this isn't the best finish, but I've noticed uh, by looking with a uh, magnifying glass that there's a lot of porosity in this casting, so some of, that's some of what you're seeing here too. But it won't matter. The machining is done, the hard part is done, but now I have six holes to drill and tap, like what we've got here. Now I've identified those, uh, those threads by taking one of the cap screws and uh, my trusty Brownells screw checker, and sure enough, it's a 1024. But to throw a little uh, curveball here, these holes are oversized. And the reason they're oversized is that we have to have this wiggle room here in the adjust a true chuck. So we adjust this chuck with those six screws loosened. Again, I didn't talk in, in this video, but these little pins here. Each one, there are four of them, has a screw here, and that's the four-jaw chuck within the three-jaw. And that moves around. If I didn't, I might have said that before, but I certainly did in the other video. Anyway, I have my fractional transfer punches, but these are oversized. And by trial and error here, using my number transfer punches, that's a number one size, or number two, rather. It's a number two uh, drill size. Yeah, a number three might fit a little easier and make the job easier. I think I'll use a number three. Glad I got those. I think this is the first time I ever used these number ones. Okay. I'm not totally sure this step is necessary, but I guess it is or I wouldn't be doing it. But uh, the, the diameter right here that I turned down is 2.110. The inside diameter here, which I just measured with a telescoping gauge, is 2.122. It's a difference of 12 thousandths. Now if I just put that in there any old way and transfer the holes, how do I know that I am concentric? So I got a starting point. Otherwise I may not have the adjustment that I need in uh, one direction or the other and I've negated what uh, this chuck is all about. So what I've decided since I get a difference of 12 thousandths between the two is I have a roll of uh, tooling foil here which is 10 thousandths. So it's just a little bit different but I know it's going to be a struggle. I, if I found some shim stock that was 12 thousandths I'm sure I wouldn't get it in here because I already did a, a test fit here. What did I do with that piece? A lot, oh here it is. So that's going to go in like this, and that's just temporary. That's in there while I transfer the holes. Now, I don't expect this to go in easily, so I'll probably have to do that off camera. No, it did. My gosh, it did. I am now ready to transfer the holes with one exception here that I like to put an index mark. I'll put it right there and later I will center punch it so I have some permanent marks but I want to always assemble it the same because we don't know how accurate these six holes are but knowing a buck they're pretty darn accurate but I don't take any chances so now I will transfer all six holes using a brass hammer and, you know, it might be a good idea if I just uh, drill and mark one, drill it and tap it and put a screw in there to hold it and then go do the other five. I think that's the way I'll do it. So here we go. Use a brass hammer when you, when you do this rather than a steel hammer. Well, what did I hit there? It wasn't all the way down. So, oh, it wasn't down. There's something in that hole. I need to clean those holes. There it is.
double check my witness mark, yeah. And there's the first hole. I will drill that out the correct size and then uh, tap it 1024. Now I'm not going to show that because I've done that in so many different videos. But I'm going to drill that and tap it right now 1024. You've seen my handy dandy tap set that I have shown in many different videos but these are all the common small sizes that I use often in model work and this is the 1024 tap already in a tap wrench, T-handle tap wrench, and it's the tapered tap. I didn't mention before, but with cast iron you don't really need lubricants. It is self-lubricating with the graphite in it. And this is the tap drill size, 5 30 seconds for that. Or I rounded it off, but it's close to a 75 percent thread. And in the back row here, these are clearance size. Well, I don't have to worry about the clearance size, because we've already got the clearance size. So that's my my tap drill size, but what I like to do, and you've seen me doing this before, a hole can drift on you, even though it's center punched nicely. So I normally take it on the little Cameron drill press and uh, spot it. Then that hole's not going to move. That's a sixteenth inch bit. tipping here. I need to set that on a parallel because of this. You just need to go in a little ways and then that hole is not going to move. Now I'll go over to the drill press and I'm going to drill that 5-30 seconds and I'll do that off camera. You've seen me do that plenty of times. I wasn't going to show this step but I guess I will anyway. I'm using two parallels here because of the step. Like that. Walnut no less. About a quarter inch thick. You see now I can drill right into the wood. I don't care. I'm not going to drill into the drill press table. And the work isn't going to cock on me. And that hole isn't going to move. Now what I'm telling you next is optional, but uh, it's recommended. If I were to tap this hole now, and, and this is, oh my gosh, it's uh, 9 16 thick. There's a fairly good chance of breaking off a tap when you go try to tap something that is that thick. Furthermore, there is no need for that much thread. The thickness of this nut is the maximum strength that a 1024 thread uh, can achieve. I don't care how thick you make the nut, it won't be any stronger. So I really only need a, the equivalent of a few threads in there. So what I intend to do is to take a clearance drill, and that will be a 3 16 bit, and I'm going to drill, oh, two-thirds of the way through. And then I'm going to tap, and that serves another purpose besides just uh, uh, preventing tap breakage and that is it will be a guide that will assure me that I am tapping straight. Now you saw me over on the drill press doing this without a drill press vise. If you're not comfortable doing that put it in a vise but something large like this is, is sometimes awkward in a vise so I do uh, some of my work freehand but I know I get criticized for that but now I'm going to go ahead and uh, and drill the clearance hole. I'll do that off camera and then I'll show you what it looks like when I tap it. There it is. I put the clearance hole on this side. There's my screw. Notice how far it goes in. So I'll only be tapping, you know, that much. That serves as a tap guide and helps me tap straight, as does 
the uh, tapered tap, which has seven tapered teeth. So between those two, that hole should be tapped pretty darn straight. If you have a tapping uh, head, go ahead and do it that way. And again, I drilled from this side on the clearance side because that's going to mount like that. And the screws coming in from this side. And I wanted uh, the clearance part here that doesn't matter to be on the outboard side. Otherwise, the screw may not be long enough, and you don't want the screws to have to buy new screws, and they, they run all the way through. So now I'm going to tap that hole. I'm just tapping this hole by hand. You can put it in the vise, but for a, a large piece like this, it's quite comfortable. Go, go in a turn or two and back it out, break your chips. You're not going to get long chips anyway with, with cast iron. It's a powdery chip and a messy black chip. And there I'm all the way through. One down and five to go, but the other five will go a lot faster. I won't have as many tool changes and I'll knock the little burr off with a file. Boy, this is going to be a long video. Just snug that down and that aluminum shim stock is in place now. Now I am free to go ahead and transfer the other five holes with the transfer punch. I should have cleaned that hole. That's going to be hard to pull out and then I'll, I'll do the other four, but I, I think I'll clean those with a drill bit first because there's some chips in there or grease. The five other holes are punched. Now I'm going to spot those on the little camera and drill press and go over and uh, drill them the tap drill size. Now do not confuse or, or uh, make a mistake here between the tap drill size and the clearance size because you're going to be swapping bits in the drill press and if you end up drilling them oversize well then what do you got? A uh, heartache. All six holes are drilled and tapped. Now when you drill those clearance size uh, that clearance size of a drill make sure you use your depth stop on the drill press. Take the burrs off if any. On these outside ones, I, I typically do this too with a, a deburring tool. I'll do that off camera. Take the shim out. Find my witness mark, which is right there. And I'll see if they all fit. Now a couple center punch marks. Because these marks will soon be gone. And I intend to polish this chuck up a little bit because it was rusty. Now these are still only, uh, and they all fit fine. Just back them off a little bit. And now I will have that wiggle room. I can feel it. You probably can't tell. And then these four screws here. Don't confuse that with the actual chuck keyhole. But on these uh, buck chucks, we've got a, an Allen wrench on the end. And these are all backed out. So I'm going to put this on the lathe here in a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and center it up. And I'm not going to show all of that because I showed that on the previous video that I recommend that you watch, which is this one. But I'm going to put it on the Atlas lathe now and uh, see if it centers up. It's a good idea to unplug your lathe when you uh, work around gears and pulleys and chucks and everything like this and you're making adjustments because you can always bump the switch. Now uh, this just took me five minutes. I'm in good practice from that other video that I did a couple days ago. But using uh, 
one key up against the other just like a four jaw chuck I'm moving it back and forth and then back and forth the other way until I got it zeroed out and this is a piece of ground drill rod so I know that it's truly round and I'm right on I'm gonna turn the belt here certainly within a half a thousand but what I just noticed here with this lathe that just by wiggling the chuck the bearings are either slightly loose or worn or whatever but I can move it about a thousandth I'm not going to worry about that right now but that is how you go about uh, putting a backing plate on a buck adjust true chuck or really for any chuck for that matter it would be a little bit easier for a regular truck chuck because you're just fitting up the male with the female whereas here I had to allow that uh, 10 or 12 thousandths to adjust it then after I got that adjusted with the four screws here and then you don't want to touch those anymore then I went back and I tightened the six cap screws on the face and I used a regular allen wrench to tighten them up rather than the uh, bondus type of of uh, handled one so I got the leverage and they're, they're good and tight now let me polish it up and then we'll take another look at it and I'm done well I polished the chuck up with some number 180 grit uh, paper and looks pretty good I can now see my witness marks here if I ever have to take it apart and I now have a nice little four inch precision chuck to use for my smaller work and it'll be just as accurate as using a collet although a little bit larger in diameter but I have collets for this lathe as well so that really completes this job and I have a set of the uh, other jaws for that as well but I, I tend to avoid changing jaws I, I dread doing it because I have uh, two other I guess these are five inchers this is a four and these are fives and one with uh, reverse jaws in it always set up that way and it's just a little bit faster to change chucks than it is to uh, change jaws a nasty little task in my estimation so all set here and I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something by it and I uh, can put this to use someday in your own home shop and this is Tubal Kane saying be sure and watch my 550 other videos and I'm saying so long for now and I'll see you in my next video.